right, guys. So I figured the best way to talk about is it worth flooring your truck is to actually drive it. It's a beautiful, warm Texas day. So we're going to be windows up, AC for the most part. All right. So the number one question I get is, am I ruining the truck? And I guess everybody wants to know is, are you still going to be able to use the truck as a truck? And the answer for the most part is yes. Now this is a 1500, it's not a 2500. So I'm not really expecting to tow huge payloads or haul, you know, like other really big items, right? So for a 1500 truck, uh, it's going to haul what I need it to haul essentially. So the first thing I noticed that was a huge difference was actually the way the truck felt in the steering wheel and uh, the handling. Now we did lower overall the center of gravity of the vehicle right uh, we lowered it three inches in the front and uh, five in the rear and we added the new shocks now I, I don't know how old the shocks were on this truck when i did lower it but putting the new shocks putting the new tie rod end links with new poly bushings the lower control arms being replaced uh, it's all new bushings and new parts so the, it is going to feel a lot better but everything immediately felt tighter everything felt more responsive from lowering it my biggest concern with lowering the truck was the stock wheels and tires. So when I bought this truck, the wheels and uh, the tires were brand new. So we all know how expensive tires are, right? So I wanted to use these up. I didn't want to just buy new wheels and tires and then have these sitting uh, in the garage. So I figured I'd save myself some money for once and actually use the tires that the truck came with. But I wanted to lower it. Another thing I pointed out to you guys was that the lower control arm, the factory one was worn out but the DJM drop kit already had that. Uh, it was the whole lower control arm, so I didn't want to buy replacement lower control arms and then again, replace them with the lowering kit. I'm just doing the work double. So moving forward, uh, with everything being replaced, truck feels a lot tighter. My big concern was that tire hitting the fender. And it's been about two weeks now and the tires do not hit the fenders. So. A lot of people, when they drop these trucks, they replace the wheels and tires with aftermarket wheels and tires. And in my case, I kept the stock wheels with the stock tires and they're huge, right? The tires are fat. Come on, buddy, you want this? All right, <laughs> so the, uh, the stock wheels and tires, they don't hurt anything, right? They don't. Now, if you are moving at a high rate of speed and you are on a bumpy road right or like a, a road with dips in it like rolling little rolling hills i have noticed that the tires do in fact hit the fender liners but they don't hit the fenders so when the suspension travels up it travels up at an upward angle like this it doesn't travel at an outward angle so it's not going to hit the actual fender of the truck but it just slightly kisses the fender liner and you can hear that scrape when the wheel is spinning and it hits the fender liner um, that's all that's really not a big deal because it doesn't happen all the time on every bump It's got to be like these whoops or like I said little rolling hills and you have some rate of speed going with you um, The other big concern again, I'm just sticking to the front end here is Bump steer now when I had my lifted 2500 it had bump steer and I think that with it being a 2500 the solid front axle and the really big aggressive wheels and tires that I had uh, that really made it seem worse. But again, the suspension geometry on that truck, we lifted it, on this truck, we lowered it. I did notice that with this truck being lowered, the bump steer is even more present, right? So I hit a bump, it's kind of hard to keep the truck straight. The wheel moves back and forth a lot. So if you are gonna lower the truck, I do highly recommend getting the bump steer kit. I haven't installed mine yet because I wanted to give an accurate, want to give accurate feedback on how the truck felt, right? Uh, the bump steer kit is from Infamous Metal Labs. It's like 200 bucks. Uh, I think it's gonna be worth all $200 once I do get it on here and get this thing aligned again. Uh, because when you're hitting some highway speeds and there's some imperfections in the highway and you hit those bumps, again, it's like you're entering the freaking stratosphere, right? This steering wheel shakes real bad and uh, it's hard to keep the truck straight. So just wrapping up the front of the truck, if you're gonna lower it, you can keep the stock wheels and tires definitely replace the shocks with the Beltec Street Performance shocks and you're gonna be just fine. I did not roll the fenders and I did not remove my fender liners. The only thing I would recommend adding is the infamous uh, Metal Fabs bump steer kit. And that's for the front end. So now 
moving on to the rear end of the truck obviously we installed the flip kit uh, we were looking for a total of uh, five inches of drop in the rear i think we accomplished that uh, it's done by putting the rear axle below the leaf spring versus it being uh, on top of the leaf spring and just some things that again need to be addressed here so when you lower or lift the vehicle your pinion angle changes right so that's the angle of your drive shaft from your rear diff uh, I didn't think it was going to be too bad. My friend Jose, uh, Street Chair Performance, his truck is so lowered, right? Because he's like on a 5'7 drop in the rear, so seven inches of drop in the rear, that at higher speeds he would feel a vibration. And eventually his drive shaft fell out, the U joints, they failed him, right? Uh, so when I met up with him at the truck show, I had asked him if he had a vibration at the lower speeds because I have sort of a vibration around 30, 30 to 35 miles per hour and it's because of the pinion angle um, so they sell pinion angle shim kits that you can install in the rear to adjust the angle of your rear diff so that your uh, drive shaft is uh, parallel with your rear differential so that is definitely something that I'm gonna have to do on this truck uh, if it doesn't bother you guys or you're not you know doing some extensive hauling or I think it'll be fine but it bothers me a little bit just feeling that vibration so I'm definitely gonna get it checked out now to the topic of C notching um, so when I first dropped the truck everything that I took off the truck um, I threw it in the bed of the truck and if you guys remember that video there was some freaking tractor weights all right there was an extra about 300 pounds of weight in the back of this truck so i put all that in the bed of the truck i put the lower control arms back there the old shocks all the old brackets all i threw everything in the bed of the truck so the rear of the truck was weighed down and i could feel it driving the truck as well the problem was that there was this one bump going into my neighborhood um that when i would hit it <laughs> the rear axle would slam into the bump stops in the frame of the truck so another question is, do you need to C-notch it? Um, so immediately I thought like, holy crap, uh, I definitely need to C-notch this truck. And good thing is I do have the kit. Um, so that would only happen on certain bumps along the road uh, that I would, you, I mean, Ashley was in the truck and I was like, hey, check this out, I'm about to hit this bump. <laughs> and when I hit the bump, I mean, it's like, it's a real stiff bang. Um, so just yesterday I got rid of all that stuff, right? I, I took all that metal crap out of the bed of my truck and I hit the same bump, the uh, rear axle doesn't hit. So that's really good news. Um, I've been driving around now, you, you can kind of tell I'm not on the best of roads. I might get on a really bad road right here in a second, but the rear axle is not hitting the frame. So for the past day and a half now, I've been running errands, I've been driving the truck as I normally would with zero issues. And I have not had the rear axle hit the uh, frame again. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I hope I was able to bring you some insight on lowering your Ram 1500 two-wheel drive, specifically your third gens. If you're wondering if you need aftermarket wheels and tires to clear the fenders with this drop kit, you absolutely do not. I daily drive this truck, everything has been fine. Again, the only thing that'll make it even better is that um, bumpster kit and a C-notch. Even if you throw some brakes in the rear every once in a while, you're gonna need that C-notch unless it doesn't bother you that the rear axle hits the frame. Other than that, um, would I go back the other way? Probably not. I really enjoy this truck. I love the way it looks right now and I love the way it handles. So I know a lot of you guys have also been uh, looking for that Challenger content. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff up on the drawing board, making plans, changing plans, really trying to find what's best for not only the car, but you know, for us, uh, for me. And I think we finally got something solid uh, but before we start, we have another autocross uh, next month. So in a few weeks, we have another autocross video. I'm not going to change anything on the car. Everything is staying absolutely the same. It's definitely going to be a seat time event. So if you guys are looking forward to that, I got another GoPro. I got some different angles I'm going to try out to show you guys what's going on inside the car as well as outside the car. Uh, when I say inside the car, I'm going to try and capture more of hand placement so you guys can kind of see uh, what I'm doing inside the car. Once we finish that event, hopefully everything lines up perfectly and we can start tearing the car down and making it better. So my goal is of course to make this the ultimate autocross Dodge Challenger on the planet. Uh, every year, every month, every day, every minute, we get closer to that goal. Uh, but I'm really excited about this next phase because it takes care of a lot of little things that have been bothering me and just makes the whole package all around better. But 
I don't want to spoil anything and I don't want to give anything away. So we'll get to that when we get to that. So as always guys, if you like these videos, hit that like button, leave a comment below. And if you love these videos, hit that subscribe button. Till next time guys, peace out.